Thank you for joining me today with Unleash the Potential, my YouTube channel. We can also be found on Spotify. Every week, I try to um, release a new interview on Sundays. Enjoy the show. I want to welcome Imran today from uh, Productive Shop. So Imran, welcome uh, to the show. Um, perhaps you can tell us about um, your business and how, how you founded it. Thank you for having me, Rob. Um, so it's actually really simple. We're a B2B growth marketing shop at the surface of it. Uh, we focus uh, on helping professional service businesses and software shops identify, target, nurture, and convert to their ideal customers. We focus a lot on personalization uh, by identifying the right personas, right, within their buyer journey to help with precision marketing and sales efforts, right? So when you're talking about growth marketing, we do the full spectrum of everything from acquisition, right, to actual lead generation, nurturing and engagement to assigning to the sales team and helping them ide identify the target accounts they should be really focusing on. Wow. So how did you come up with this? Uh, how did you start Productive Shop? Like, was it a great, a, a great question. Like, like most businesses, we didn't actually start as a, as a growth marketing studio. So we're geeks at heart, right? I mean, if, if I'm being super honest, we, we started as a hardcore web, web shop a couple of years ago. Uh, and we built user experiences that simply had to convert. And that's something we've all, all, I mean, everyone has a psychology background, like criminology background, right, in our, in, in our shop. And everyone somehow also has a web development and a marketing management background. So when we started web development, we always knew that user experience and building converting experiences that actually make someone want to interact with you on various digital, digital channels. It, obviously there's the website, but there's also social and ads and content and email, right? So we always focused on building custom sites, custom e-commerce platforms in order to minimize clicks, of course, I mean, at a high level, right? And build an experience that people want to convert through, right? Whether it's a conversion on signing up for a subscription on email or shopping cart conversions, right? Or downloading a form when it comes to uh, let's say a B2B business, right? That's so, how we started. So um, how, how many people work uh, with you? Like, did you start off just a couple people and now like, how big's the team? Yeah, so, so initially we started with five people. We literally just, it, it was a moonlight scenario. I think like, what, like most people, we did not start in the basement. That's, that's the one, I guess one difference uh, between startups. We did not start in the basement. We're, you know, we're working from home. Uh, and I mean, and that's the beautiful thing, by the way, because it was web development, everyone's always remote. We're working, uh, we were working from home. It was started with five people. We're now 18 full-time people wow. with around seven to 10 uh, on staff contractors that we use, of course, for specific projects, right? Um, and we're across three geographies. We're in Spain, we're in Canada, so Toronto, and we're in Austin, Texas, um, you know, and Although we started from the web development sphere, uh, we graduated to this full service, full stack growth marketing shop where we do, of course, web development at the core, right? We do SEO and content, email marketing and paid advertising, right? With the whole goal of all of those initiatives driving more conversions and sales. Oh, wow. So, so I guess that um, when you're building your own business, and you um, have to change and pivot, I guess, and follow your, 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 your customers. Is that what you did to go from one, one product's uh, suite to another? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, what's interesting is when you do web development, um, if you've got a keen eye on business development also, and thankfully we did, we always saw I mean, you, when you talk to clients, right, and you, you're constantly listening, you should be always active, right? Um, all teams, not just web developers and, and marketers and sales, right? 
everyone should always be actively listening to their customers, whether it's a direct complaint or a pain point or a praise, right? So we're actively always listening to all those three. And we started realizing that, hey, like we really need to start breaking the barriers of B2B, right? And what are the biggest barriers to B2B lead generation, right? 60% of literally 60% of businesses lack the resources, their teams lack the resources, time, money, scope, people, right? And experience uh, to run full on marketing campaigns, to run full on digital uh, internal campaigns to let's say build a better experience. And 40% of businesses, B2B businesses, lack the data and customer insights to drive campaigns. And that's something we started picking up because we were the web developers. So we're like, we started seeing this data come in and we started realizing, hey, like we're attracting the right people. We're actually getting more clicks. We're getting more, for example, an e-commerce store, right? Like we're getting like 30% more purchases but what happens post purchase? So when you start asking these questions, you start realizing that a lot of businesses, they might be great and they somehow figured out a way to sell, right? That which is where they are now. And these are usually early stage. So we call them emerging businesses or, or early middle market businesses, right? But what they don't know is how to go from early and middle, this, this middle, early middle market stage to having exponential growth. And that's when they start realizing, oh man, like I really need to know what more insights about my customers? I need more data points, right? What are they interacting with? What questions are they asking? What are their pain points? How can I solve them? Maybe their pitch that got them to where they are now no longer resonates with the next audience they should be targeting. So anyway, so that's how we- It like there's a change though in the way people engage. It's more specifically on the re revenue side it sounds like it's more about listening to the potential client and finding yes. what the potential client wants instead of in the past where I've no noticed that uh, legacy businesses basically build a product and then try to tell the client, this is what you get. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. Cor absolutely. And unfortunately, we're still seeing that a lot in the B2B sphere. And shockingly, a lot with software companies, there's always niche players, right? Let's say healthcare software providers, HRIS, right? Uh, human resource systems uh, uh, software providers, even project management software. What we find with these software companies, they're really good at what they do. They're really good. Let's say they, they, they made an ERP or they made a, you know, a work management, like task management software, and they, know how to they, they know their product what they don't know is how to reach out to the market to attract the, uh, attract them based on their pain points and their needs right because what they're trying to do is you know they know their product like, for example this cup i know i designed this cup it's nice it's got like this whatever diamond pattern and it's white so i'm going to sell these features right not knowing like you said that do people even care about these features, right? Maybe I can sell it, repackage myself in a way that will resonate and attract people better. And that's where we come in. We try to bridge that gap and attract the right people to see the benefits of this product. So I guess in that example, if you have a core product, which you're trying to have a core product so you can scale and keep your costs down, I think yeah. it's very important for organizations like yourself to help uh, people understand that there's different segments of customer type that you can make subcategories uh, outside yes. of your core, core product, which probably I'm just, assu uh, I'm assuming is going to have a higher conversion rate and clo close sales uh, in a higher degree. You're a hundred percent right. Correct. Okay. And it's cool. by, and it's by identifying these personas and target personas where you start in seeing exponential, Convert and these aren't like two percent, five percent. You're gonna start seeing twenty-one, thirty to forty percent higher open rates, conversion rates. And I'm not just talking about. I'm just giving simple examples, like for newsletters and you know even cold pitches, whether it's email or phone. The the more precise the target is and your pitches towards their pain points, the higher chance you have in selling or first of all capturing the attention and selling to the customer knowing that b2b especially 
has, on average, uh, B2B has over five people in the decision-making group. So the wow. smart salesperson, the smart, the well-informed marketer, right, needs to understand that these five people or more, right, uh, they all have different personalities. They all have different professional motivations. They all have different uh, professional grading criteria, right? So you need to know how to approach each person in that decision making group, bring them on a similar level of understanding and sell to them because it's not, it's not like a B2C purchase, right? Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. It's very customized uh, or you're trying to make it less customized with uh, having someone with you, you and your team around. Yep. So I guess that, that I guess then my, uh, the, the question I have for you is like, what is your passion uh, in life? And, uh, I'm sure it's coming through on your success of your business, but. Great question. So aside from business, uh, our team uh, and friends, we, we go out and we travel a lot. So, it, and it's more on the extreme, uh, extreme end of travel as in we'll, we'll do hiking, we'll do backpacking, right? We'll, we'll go to skydiving trips, we'll go mountaineering and skiing trips. So it's, it's a very active lifestyle. You'll usually also find our laptops coming with us, of course, <laughs> uh, because, you know, it's a little bit of adrenaline on both sides. There's the, there's the fun, the business end. But uh, I would say that's the passion, passion. It's like it's backpacking and skiing. It's the top. Right. Three. So, yeah. yeah. So you and I have a lot in common. So adventure is um, is like my middle name, I think. And, yeah. Uh, I'm glad sure. that, uh, we've met up on this, uh, this YouTube uh, broadcast so we could probably probably talk about our next ski trip when the pandemic ends for sure um, the uh, the thing about it is is that uh, i wanted to ask you one last question which is um do you have any advice for companies today that are you know they're found the founders or the entrepreneurs that are that are running their businesses um any kind of uh, attributes that they should be focusing on absolutely yes um, the number one thing I would say is, uh, stay, just have perseverance, right? And be extremely persistent. Do not panic because of some short term fads. We've seen this before. We've all been through this before. Every 10, 15 years, this happens, you know, in 2008, it was, I wouldn't say artificial market crash, but it was, it was a, it was a, it was a market crash, you know, and it was a fad at the end of the day, right? Like. And when I say fad, as in it was a short-term lived catastrophe, uh, uh, the same is, uh, th that's what's happening right now with COVID, right? It happened. There's nothing we can do to prevent it, uh, but it's already on the up and up, right? Like you're seeing governments already announce reopening plans. Uh, what Basically, what I'm trying to say is do not panic, do not react on fads, which might, I guess, sabotage strategic goals because a lot of businesses especially for example our business we have strategic goals for the year yes some fads some uh, short-lived trends might change the way people work and COVID might change the way for example e-commerce grew right I think they're growing at an exp exponential rate and it might have been the reality hammer that some business asset businesses needed right and a lot of office businesses that uh, office based business needed to realize hey maybe I don't really need these big offices right but at the end of the day basically don't react uh, don't, don't have knee-jerk reactions that's number one number two stay just have persistence and perseverance don't just completely change your business model to react to this situation because once you get out of it, most likely 90% of things are going to be back to the way they were before. And if you've just rebuilt your business model to deal with just this scenario, you might be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I think so. I think it's going to either uh, create stronger companies or create new companies altogether that have Absolutely. Uh, brand new market opportunities. So very Absolutely. good advice. Um, just before we close, um, you know, I know you're unleashing the potential of these, com these companies by giving them the opportunity if they use you to generate um, greater revenues, uh, less cost of goods to close, yep. um, and more accuracy around their products. So uh, how, how do they get in touch with you? Productiveshop.com. I would go to the website, find the service that is right because it's on conversions. We believe that we're that team. Um, just go on the website, have a look at the services that you might need. 
Uh, we're not perfect for everyone. Right, we work with very, we're very involved with our clients. We typically grow them, grow their sales 16% year over year um, through our growth initiatives, right? And what we've been finding, actually, so that so that's how you find us, right? But what we've been finding, right, at least in this time, people are gravitating towards support. So most likely, people watching uh, our video now, uh, they'll be more. Uh, you know, gravitating towards support plans and predictable pricing, predictable support plans, something that just gives them that extra muscle to get through the time, whether it's, you know, newsletters or fixing their websites and maintaining their CRM, right? Segmenting better to get ready for uh, the market to get back to rocking again. Well, great, great advice and great uh, access to, uh, you know, your, your, your company, uh, for the, for the listeners and uh, and those that are watching the YouTube channel, so thank you again um, for being here today, and uh, stay safe. Likewise, thank you, Rob. There you have it, another inspiring founder that is unleashing the potential. Hit subscribe on YouTube, and please follow me on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Stay tuned for next week's inspiring talk.